We often talk about blue collar union workers on this show, but we don't often talk about labor movements in higher paying professions like athletes, actors, and musicians. One class of increasingly well-known entertainers who are at the highest level are classified as independent contractors and are unable to collectively bargain for better benefits and pay. Bet you wouldn't guess that we're talking about professional wrestlers. They're specially trained professionals who combine acting and physical competition to make a living, often in front of sold out crowds and on TV, but they've never actually been organized. And one group is actually looking to change all of that. Joining us now is independent professional wrestler David Starr. He's the co-founder of We The Independent, a labor empowerment group helping organize professional wrestlers around the world. David, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you guys for having me. Great I to have it. you. So, really excited to be here. David, what inspired you to start doing this work? Why, what inspired you to start organizing? Well, I've yeah. kind of, uh, I've always been politically involved or interested, sure. I suppose, and just seemed to be all of us in the back every time wrestlers all get together. We've always kind of talked about these issues, but no one's ever come out publicly and said it because it's it's kind of dangerous. Yeah. Uh, as far as if you're on an independent level and you're looking to go to the corporate wrestling level to make, you know, the top tier money, you can. Mm -hmm. You can't talk. You can't use the U word. Oh, really? That's like, oh no, that's like taboo. So um, there's been a couple movements to organize and unionize us. It was always behind the curtain. It was always kind of private, and we yeah. just decided, no, you know, the only way this is going to really work mm -hmm. is if we come out and say it. Because right now, there's we're obviously in a political climate, we're in an economic climate where workers in general just they're feeling the squeeze. So we just knew that we could use public mm -hmm. discourse. We yeah. could use the uh, the support of our fans and other workers to actually really start a conversation and really mm. get organization happening. And what has been the response been, both from the public, but also have you faced professional repercussions? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty much blackballed from uh, two major uh, corporate wrestling companies at this point, which would be WWE and Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor's owned by Sinclair Broadcasting. Okay. Uh, they don't really like me too much because I decided mm. to say some, you know, just call them what they are, which is yeah. an extremist propaganda mm. uh, machine. And WWE doesn't like me because I've you know, I've been very honest about the things that WWE does to their workers. They exploit their labor and they give literally like zero benefits to their wrestlers that they classify as independent contractors to try and take advantage of a system or some sort of loopholes and things. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've definitely felt those repercussions. Most wrestlers that I speak to on an independent level and even privately, the people that are signed currently at the corporate level, they're pretty receptive to the idea, but they can't, they're not really able to speak out and say anything. We've got a couple activists that have joined us uh, on the independent level. We have uh, mostly UK wrestlers. Uh, someone named the OJMO, who's like young upstart wrestler in the UK, and he's getting very, very popular. We have Zoe Lucas, who is currently in Japan with Stardom. Uh, my partner and my uh, co-founder, James Musselwhite, who's fantastic, uh, worldwide renowned photographer. Mm -hmm. We've gotten good responses from people. We've gotten some pushback for people that do work for you know, corporate wrestling, they work for WWE and they, there's this spin that gets put out there if you attack or if you call out the company that you're calling out the workers. Mm. It's just not how it goes. So some people take it personally yeah. when they've been working so hard to get to WWE, they've been working so hard to achieve their dreams. And then you have, you know, some an indie schmuck going out there being like, hey, I want you guys to have more. What you have isn't enough. Like fight, fight together. Go, well, I wanted this. And it's yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> It just we, we, we have a unique opportunity to push for the things that we really should be getting. Mm. And so it strikes me that this is this isn't just wrestling. This is all of entertainment, right? Yes. Which is that the 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 amount of the profit is consolidated very much at the top. Some scraps are thrown, but you don't really own a lot of the stuff. You don't actually have much of the stake, despite the fact that you basically are the product that yep. is being put out there. So, what have you seen this not just within wrestling, but across the whole industry? And what, how is that? How has that discussion been? Well, sure. I yeah. mean, there's there other other forms of entertainment have been able to organize, right? You know, and it's just kind of I, I don't know why that's much different than why rest, what wrestling is. I just think that we've always kind of been told not to get involved in that business stuff. That's not something for us, you know. Mm -hmm. Athletes in general tend to be, I mean, stereotypically speaking, tend to be kind of meatheads. Yeah. You know, you go out there, you do, yeah, yeah, you know, you go yeah. out there, you do your job, and you're getting a salary, and you're thinking, that's it, cool, great. But in wrestling, we've constantly been told, constantly been told that not to be a troublemaker. You know, you've constantly been told that if you even say no to a contract and fight for negotiations, you're difficult to work with. Mm -hmm. And then we'll find somebody else who will take it at a lower price. It's a constant battle in which they're 
they're pitting uh, worker against worker. And yeah. It's very typical as far as, you know, when you see yeah. mass, massive companies trying typical to Typical tactics. Yeah. And what do you think a union contract and being able to organize, like, what do you think that would get you? Well, what, what I really want to see on a corporate wrestling level, what I really want to see is I want to see guys getting pensions. I want to see guys getting proper royalties. I want to see them getting proper merchandise and cuts. Because what I'll, does the career life look like for a wrestler? Like, how long to, can you can you do this? Well, so it, it really depends. Yeah. I mean, uh, you have some guys who wrestle after they're done wrestling on TV. They'll wrestle till they're 60, 70. Like, they'll keep wow. going. Yeah. There's guys like Dory Funk who are, I think he's in his 70s, and he still wrestles in Japan every once in a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, on TV, usually, it doesn't go much further than, like, the top guys you'll get there to, like, maybe your mid 40s yeah. yeah but usually it doesn't go after that so we have a very short window to get as much as we possibly can and it's just not it's not being given to us mm -hmm. i mean if you just look at numbers wb's revenue percentage that they actually pay out for talent salary is less than 10 percent uh, and you, if you compare that to other major sports their other major sports are around 50 percent Hmm. Wow. And even from a merchandising standpoint merchandise profit splits at a wb level average is about five percent the average athlete worldwide gets 12%. Mm -hmm. So there's, just from a cash flow standpoint, that's there. And you're talking about a very dangerous sport, a very dangerous entertainment, get zero healthcare benefits from these corp from any corporate wrestling. I mean, especially, obviously, one that stands out is WWE, because you have somebody who's become a billionaire off the backs of mm -hmm. people's labor, and then they get no royalties off of now their new subscription model, which took away a massive amount of revenue from the wrestlers. Interesting. When they, when they changed from the pay-per-view model to the WWE Network or subscription model, mm -hmm. a huge portion of money that went to the wrestlers got taken away. And that was decided unilaterally. There was no say from labor as far as what was going to happen there, and they still get nothing for that. They have their, their likeness used on YouTube, which they generate thousands and thousands um, probably millions of dollars off of YouTube itself. They get no royalty benefits off of their likeness being used for that. Mm -hmm. There's just a lot of problems, and it's just a completely imbalanced sport at the corporate level. Yeah. Wow. So what does retirement look like for, you know, you're done at, you're done yeah. at 40 years old? What does it look like for these well, men and women? Well, I mean, most people have no, they have nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're this sitting... This has been their whole life, of course. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're not getting that much. I think, uh, f from, from what I understand, a basic TV contract for WWE is about like it's anywhere between like a hundred to one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. But WWE has has kind of rigged their system as they've tried to monopolize the business. To they don't provide accommodation. They don't they don't pay for the transportation. Wow. Guys guys go to shows and they have to drive five hours to the next show overnight. They have to rent their own car and they have to drive themselves. Wow, that's wild. It's nuts. Yeah. Um, there was a, an interview with like one of the, a great wrestler who wrestles for WWE. Her name's uh, Bailey, mm -hmm. and she kind of got thrown off when she said these things. And then the interviewer was like, "You guys don't was that in your CBA?" And she was like, uh, uh, "You got really nervous because <laughs> yeah, right. she doesn't want to get herself in trouble, yeah. you know." Right. And I felt bad. She got put in that position, just kind of telling the truth, and then right. realized, "Oh man, me telling the truth could get me in, in That's trouble." That's a problem. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, it takes a lot of courage to speak out. Um, thank you for joining. I'm yeah, sure thank you so much for joining. Yeah. So, thank you, Joseph. Sure. Brothers and sisters there, thank you, too. I appreciate it. A little more rising after this.